So the symptoms um, for EOE vary during a person's lifetime. So if you're a baby with eosinophilic esophagitis, um, some of the more common ways that the symptoms present are to have um, vomiting, and it really looks very much like the baby has reflux, and that's usually what they end up getting diagnosed with, is that they have gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD, and they actually usually get put on acid-blocking medicines, or they get changed if they're, for example, on a milk-based formula, the formula will be changed around in an attempt to try and treat their reflux symptoms. So sometimes the babies will actually vomit so much or have so much difficulty eating, which is pretty hard to gauge in a baby because they can't tell us they're having difficulty eating. Um, that they will have trouble gaining weight and growing. So failure to thrive is another way that babies will show up when they have eosinophilic esophagitis. When they get older and they're able to communicate more, the school-aged child usually complains of abdominal pain, sometimes chest pain. And so the symptoms are pretty nonspecific. That could be from anything like constipation. It could be linked to even anxiety. It could be linked um, to so many different disorders, but that is the most common symptom is abdominal pain as the child becomes a school-age um, person. And then by the time you get to be an adolescent or an adult, the symptom that is definitely the most salient is dysphagia, which is the trouble swallowing. And that in adults is especially why they end up at the gastroenterologist's um, office why they end up with the endoscopy with the biopsy, the main complaint is trouble um, swallowing. Now, they also have reflux symptoms and sometimes pain, but the reflux symptoms and the pain are more common among children than among adults. So dysphagia far, far and away. And then the other thing that happens is that you can get food impactions, and so the food actually gets stuck on the way down, and then it's really trouble swallowing because it's physically, physically stuck there. Um, so it, it depends on your age. One of the things that's important when you're um, a physician and thinking about dysphagia is to remember especially that adolescents and adults especially can compensate for the fact that they have trouble swallowing. So if you walk into a room and just ask, is it hard for you to swallow? A lot of times people will say, no, it's not hard for me to swallow. Um, and that's because they change the texture of the food they eat. They chew for a very long time. Um, they'll you know, completely avoid certain foods that are very solid. Um, and so or they're just simply used to it and they don't really notice it anymore. So it can, it's a very important symptom to elicit, but sometimes you have to really ask about whether they have trouble swallowing.